Hi guys, today we're going to show you how to take apart a uh, Maverick X3. We'll show you how to take the clutches apart, put them back together, and install them on, on and off the machine. Um, so to get started, basically what we did is jack the machine up, the rear tires in there. You don't 100% have to remove the, the rear shot, but it does make the job a lot easier to get in the, the clutch cover off and work on the clutch and stuff. So basically what we did is jack it up just enough where the, the rear tires barely off the ground. Uh, remove the shock bolts, which we already did. You just pick up on the shock and set that off to the side. Once you get that off, um, loosen this hose clamp up here. You don't have to take this off because this is pretty hard. Um, it's pretty hard to bend this, but you just loosen it and remove the rest of the clutch cover bolts, which we've already taken some of them, some of them out. Pull this off. Once that comes loose, then you can pull down on that. And you'll get your clutch cover off. That's going to show you the two clutches in here. It's going to be your drive clutch or your primary clutch or on the motor. This is your driven clutch or your secondary clutch on the transmission. And obviously, you got your belt. Um, before we get going too far on there, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but um, on the inside of the belt here, when you whenever you go to take it off, always read and there should be some either an arrow or some numbers pointing on it. Um, the big thing in there is when you go to take it off, just make sure if you're reusing that belt, you put it on the same direction it came on. Otherwise, we'll show you when you put the new belt on how to do that too. But um, now we'll get in here and start taking the part. All right, so to remove the belt, Cam will give you this tool here. If you don't have this, this is an OEM part. Um, so you basically want to thread this in like this. And then you want to make sure the bolt's going to fit on the flat spot here. You can tell where this one's been on and off a couple times. You want to make sure you're not pushing, pushing in one of the holes. Um, but then you just tighten this up. As you tighten that up, it's going to open up the clutch and it takes the tension off the belt. So you can get the belt on and off fairly easy. Just pull off the top. You got your belt off. Um, then you got to remove this tool. So just back off this nut or the bolt. So unthread this. And then you got to use this Can-Am tool to lock in place. This one looks a lot like the, the other ones we'd use on a lot of other Can-Ams, but this one is specific to the X3. Um, and what you got to do is there's some arrows on here and you line these up here and you put the, the two tabs in the, in the holes in the helix and you line up this and thread this into the clutch. So um, Sometimes you got to wiggle them around and move them around a little bit to make everything line up. Alright, so I got this in, lined up in the holes, got this threaded in, you just got to tighten this up enough to hold it in place. And what that this will do is it will lock both clutches in there, um, that way you can take both clutches off and on and torque them on. Um, this back clutch here is a 17 millimeter. And unlike the other Canon clutches, you can actually pull these clutches off. They're, they're, they're self contained, so there's no spring tension behind this bolt here. So you just remove this, and there's a washer in there that's stuck in there. You get the washer, just pay attention how it's, it's beveled on the one end. Alright, and then to pull the primary clutch bolt out, it's a 24 millimeter. So, just got this get loose. Again, keep track of the, the bolts and the washers on there. Most of the time it's only going to have one washer on it, but you never know. Pull that out, and then you want to use the clutch puller. This is EPI clutch puller, the PCP16. Threads in there. And 
You don't want to use an impact wrench or anything. You want to always do this by hand. If you use an impact, you can damage your puller, the clutch, or your crankshaft, or all three. So just go in there, pick that up. Let's take the 19 millimeter, I believe. And then you want to tighten it, and it should pop off. Sometimes it comes off nice and easy, other times it'll make a pretty violent sound pop, but that's what it's designed to do. There, I wasn't even on it, and it also just popped. Um, so one thing to watch, obviously you don't want the clutch to fall on the ground or anything. Um, if you got to the point where you were really cranking on it hard and it doesn't seem like it's coming off, um, the next best thing to do is you can lightly tap it on the straight on the end of the, the puller without damaging it or breaking it. You just want to give it a little tap, love tap, and sometimes that extra vibration will, will allow it to come off. Um, then you can get the clutch off. And basically what we'll do is we're going to set it up on the bench and we'll show you how to take down the primary clutch first. All right, so now we got the, the clutch on a nice clean workbench. Uh, what you want to do is thread the puller so it's about an inch up from here. You know, there's a gap there, about an inch. Um, and then this is the best if you got two people do it. I'm gonna have the camera guy hit it So hopefully the camera stays somewhat still but basically what happens is this clutch is pressed together when you torque it on the on the clutch or on the machine um, And when you pound on this puller you want to hit make sure you hit it nice and square and flat and then it'll just drop down um, So just make sure you hold one person kind of hold it up another So you're not banging or breaking the clutch on anything else and then have another person hit this nice and solid and it should pop loose. We'll see if we can do it with, with just two people here and holding the camera, but. Sometimes it goes easy, and sometimes it takes a little more effort. There you go. So it, obviously it doesn't fall down to the ground because the clutch puller is holding it together, but you can see it's, it, it's loose here. And then before we pull anything apart, um, you want to mark these. I put an X here, here, and here just to make sure everything lines up when you put it back together. So then, just unthread the clutch puller. And then, you pull this up. And then, you pull this out. Um, sometimes there's O-rings and there's little plastic buttons in here. Uh, most other can amps don't have the o-rings in there, but these ones do so just be careful when you come apart Or when you pull this apart watch for flying parts or, or parts fla falling on the floor or whatever because they might you might lose them um, There's a couple fell out As long as you know where to go you just kind of clean them up set them aside Sometimes they can drop down in the clutch and stuff so pay attention to that um, And this will reveal two things one you have your rollers here, which are actually kind of technically sliders They're octagon shaped um, so if they're really worn what you want to do is move them over to a fresh one so you get a nice surface for your weights again and then um, Then you can see your fly weights also uh, We'll take these weights out and it's usually an 8 millimeter and a 25 Torx and What you'll do Pull the bolt out, pull the weight out. This is an EPI weight in here. The stock weights, if you're pulling those out, are going to be a little bit different. You dig them out of the box here. When you pull your stock weight out, it's going to have a bushing like that, but there should be a washer on both sides of it. So if you're reusing the stock weights or if you're pulling these out, just make sure that you remove all those and then set them aside. And so then just repeat that process for the other weights. All right, so we got all the weights in. And just a reminder, the EPI weights, they have a built-in washer on the side of them. So if you're using EPI weights, you don't use the factory washer. Um, so you just leave those out. Just put all your six weights in there. Make sure they pivot nice and free. Um, and then the next step is this is the clutch compression tool. The CCT820 is the part number. Um, this works on all the Maverick X3s and a lot of the Defenders clutches. Um, basically what you want to do is mount it in the vise or you can put it on the edge of the table or mount it to the table if you want. Um, slide this down. Put the cup on there. 
All right, so you just tighten this down again, move my hand so you can see it. Um, and this should fit, you know, nice and centered on the cup here. And you just, you don't want to crank it down on it. You just want to just put a little tension on there um, just to hold it down. And I've already uh, removed three of these screws just to speed up for the, the speed of the video. But typically what you'll see is there's a T30 um, uh, bolt in here. And you just take all three or all six of those out. It takes a couple seconds. Um, but just remember there's spring tension on here. So if you don't have a holding, a tool holding this, you got, you know, a couple hundred pounds of spring force underneath there. So you always want to make sure you got something controlling that. All right, once you get these bolts removed, um, these have been in and out a couple times. Uh, for some reason, KM will actually put some silicone in there. So sometimes you might have to clean that out just to be able to get the, the, your, your torque wrench to fit in there right. Um, but then once you get all those loose, you just slowly let this come up. And again, if you got this tool, you don't want to use an impact wrench or anything. You just want to do it all by hand. And as you, as it comes up, you'll be able to see the spring in there. Once it gets up far enough, the spring tension comes off. Slide that up, and then you'll have the housing here and your spring. Take the spring out, put the, this spring back in. This is actually the stock spring going back in here. Put your housing on. Um, make sure your spring seats flatly in there and make sure you line up your bolts close. And then tighten this down. Now we did on this one too, since it's not loose here. Before we took it apart, I did American X on it and it lined up with our X's, just so you know they're all lined up. Um, I don't know if it's 100% necessary on that one, but it's something that we just do by habit here. So, um, but once you get everything centered up and going, Tighten it all back down. Again, with the tool, it makes it real nice and easy and safe so you're not having parts come flying out and stuff like that. But you still always want to be careful because there's a lot of spring tension on there once you get it compressed down. So. And then once you get it going, just tighten it down. And just make sure it seats flat in there. Sometimes if it's caught off one way or another, it might not totally sit right. Um, but before you crank it down, I like to always start the bolts in there. Basically, you just line them up. Just put all the bolts in there and tighten them down. Once you got all the bolts started, you know it's going to be lined up right. All right, so now we've got all these tightened down. Um, remove the nut. Pull out all the 820 compression tool. Pull the clutch off. And what we want to do is clean up the clutches real good before we put them all back together. Uh, we, we did this one real quick, but basically what you want to do is if you've got real light sandpaper or an emery cloth or scotch pad like this, basically you just want to scrape, or not scrape, um, buff it kind of up and down like this from the outside to the inside and go all the way around and then you don't you just want to get the shiny marks off you don't and the rubber and stuff like that you don't want to put any deep scratch or anything like that then take a can of brake cleaner on a clean rag spray it on there just wipe it down and then you're good to go you got a nice clean clutch do that to both um, both halves of the primary clutch and also the secondary and one other thing i forgot to mention when we pull this whole clutch apart two things to kind of watch for one make sure there's this little plastic washer um, make sure that's in there sometimes it might stick to the clutch here uh, just make sure it's always there and also check your bearing make sure that's turned nice and free uh, you know if you've been in the dirt or the mud and the water a lot um, this bearing might start to stick and you might need to replace that too so um, other than that um, what you want to do with the primary and this might be a little tricky with just one person but um, it's best to have two people but i got two people or kind of three hands here with the camera guy um, we'll try to do it. Um, these buttons, again, they can fall out. There's an O-ring in here um, that would normally be uh, behind the button. Make sure, you get, make sure you get them all in place. They do come out, make sure you got the right side sticking out. 
and sometimes it takes an extra set of hands just to hold everything in place um, and then make sure also Mike here help me he's gonna hold it and then you basically gotta line it up and, and get to go down there um, especially if you're putting new o-rings in this will be a lot tighter fit um, and a lot more pain in the butt to get on there um, it definitely will take two people this one's been got a lot of time on it been part a lot so it's a little bit easier than normal um, but then once you got that make sure if you're carrying this around the shop whatever you're holding on to it so it doesn't fall apart and then you stick this half on here and we're pretty much done with this for now um, until we go to put it back in the machine and we'll start ripping in the secondary clutch all right so now we're going to work on the secondary um, the biggest thing to remember on this one is first can and puts an alignment mark on the clutch and i don't know how good the camera can see it but there's a little arrow like that you'll find that on both sides of the clutch and also on the helix so and they should be right in line with each other so here's i'll keep my finger on here here's the one down there which you can see there in line and then the one on the helix so that's the biggest keys they should be when you take everything apart it should be aligned now sometimes this roller this clutch can be sometimes stuck over here so you might be off within that much but as long as you're that close you're, you're good if you're a third or a half a turn off then, then if something's out of alignment so um basically once you recognize that and you put x's on the clutch or whatever it helps us for you that way um then it's just a matter i like to break these loose first which i already did real quick i think just break these loose and then again you're going to use that same tool the cct 820 clutch compression tool that we use on the primary you slide the helix down on that slide the cup over here tighten this down And again, you don't want to crank, super crank on it or anything. You don't want to put a lot of load on it. Um, you're, just, you're just kind of taking enough to take the tension off the bolts. And what you'll see, um, once you start loosening this up, these bolts go directly in the, in the helix down here. This aluminum piece sticking out here. This is your helix and your rollers that slide up and down on it. Um, as we crank this up, it'll slide up on the helix and eventually there's about uh, about a third of a turn or a little less of preload on here so it's going to twist a little bit so when you're doing this kind of pay attention how it's coming apart and you'll see that um, but for now you can take out these bolts and the compression tool will hold everything in, in place Once you get this part done, I'll slowly let up the clutch and you'll see where it twists a little bit. So now we'll just slowly unthread this. Again, you don't want to use an impact or anything like that. But if you can see underneath um, in here, you get on the view. As I let this up, usually there's a certain point where it gets the, the roller gets off the helix and then it'll spin just a little bit. It's not a whole lot, but there. Oop. The whole thing spun around me, but but basically what you what you see is I don't know if I can hold it's basically about the thickness of that roller uh, or that tower is almost what it what it spins around and stuff. So um, I wasn't holding the clutch, I was trying to watch that. Um, but you guys get kind of the picture there. And it's just a matter of pulling this back off. And the main thing to remember there is when you put the new springs in, it'll require that little bit of preload. So when you pull that off, here's the clutch. Anytime you have it apart, you want to inspect your rollers, making sure they turn nice and free. Um, no flat spots or anything like that, no cracks. Um, you'll have a little plastic spring cup in there, which will go on. Then you help the spring, and this is your helix. When you go to put everything back together, uh, you just want to dry wipe this with a with a nice clean rag. Um, the other thing you want to do, which I forgot to tell you beforehand, is we put an X where the spring hole is. Um, sometimes if, if, if it's a brand new clutch and it's never been apart before, you normally see, if you forget to do this, you'll see where the... Um, 
where the spring was mounted in there, either on the inside or outside. But it's I always like just to be safe and mark that. Again, sorry, I forgot to tell you that beforehand, but um, you'll see an X there. Um, when you go to put the spring back in, just make sure, see how the spring sits through the hole there. Set that in place. When you set this down in there, it'll push up on that tab a little bit, but it'll be fine. Um, now is a good thing is to clean the clutches and, and everything first. Um, before I forget, I'm gonna put this back in, uh, in place too. Um, but then you can take these two clutch halves and clean them apart, um, just like you did in the primary. Just uh, clean them real good with a scotch Bright emery cloth. Wipe them down with um, brake cleaner again, and you're good to go. But then from there, the tricky part is you want to get this into the spring, into that hole there. So it should seat in there pretty good, pretty easily. Um, sometimes it's actually easier to, if you hold the clutch on its side, and put them in like this. And then that way you can kind of twist and make sure it's in there. Which right now I don't think it is. Let me grab it here. So I got that in there. There, not locked in. And then just hold everything together, slide it down on the clutch or on the tool. Kind of line up everything as straight as possible as you do it. And you want to press it down. Again, this is something you want to do again slowly. You want to put a big deep impact or anything like that on it and just zing it down. Because um, you can damage the, the clutch rollers also. So as we get close, what you want to do is, I don't know if you can see it, but when the roller gets close to this tower, you want to be able to be able to spin it over and get the preload on it. Again, this is really nice if you got another person there to help you. Um, I'm going to get it close here. And then basically you got to just turn over that little bit. And then if you have somebody else tighten it down, but you hold it in place. Um, if it's bound up really hard, it might be might not be fully done. You just got to be careful you don't damage these plastic rollers. Once you get going, um, you can crank it down pretty easily. And then what you need to watch is your holes for your helix want to line up. And if it's not lined up perfectly at first, it'll as you tighten it down, it'll roll down. The rollers roll down on the helix and kind of line themselves up a little bit better too. So we'll get a little bit closer and see how it goes. And sometimes you got to move it a little bit just to make it work. And so again, this might take two people. Um, sometimes you can kind of cheat a little bit and and either turn it a little bit or you can crank down on the nut just a little bit and that'll keep it from rotating too. And what I like to do when I get them started is before you crank one down all the way, just kind of tighten them Tighten one down a little bit and then move on to the one, other one across from it. And that'll help the center and seat them a little bit better too. So work your way around a couple times. And then once you get them pretty close to tight, um, you can take it out of here if you want or you can torque them down on here and set them to the factory specs. Which all that will be listed in our clutch kit instructions too. All the torque specs for all the different bolts and everything. Take it off the tool, and you're almost good to go. Again, you've got to tor torque these down to where they need to be, but you also just want to do a quick verification. Make sure your arrows are lined up. So your arrow here, and your arrow is here. Again, it's it's pretty close. So you're, you're really close there, and then your arrow here. So I'll hold my finger here, but we're, we're almost lined. That little bit is within reason. And if I turn this over, um, Right here's the arrow, there's the arrow, there's the arrow. So they're all in line now, so should be good to go. All right, so now we're gonna put the clutches back on the machine. Just remember when you're carrying this clutch around that, you know, it's the two clutch halves are still loose from each other. So if you're carrying just the top half, it can fall apart on you. Um, but basically you wanna be real careful. Set on the machine, push that one on. Put your primary clutch back on. 
It'll go through two sets of threads in there, so it takes a little bit. You gotta just leave it like that for now. Grab your secondary clutch, put that on. There we go. KM does recommend you use a new bolt every time you use this. Um, I haven't had a problem as long as you torque it properly, but going off factor recommendations, they tell you to put a new bolt in there every time. So um, if you have it apart, you might want to think about that. And then you just tighten that up a little bit. And then you get the tool back on there. Again, sometimes you gotta play around with these to kind of get them to line up. Seems like it's a little bit easier to start this a little bit in there to kind of hold it off. You just want to make sure that your arrows line up on here and you want to make sure that you're not going in the, the hole that the spring is in. And then you want to set the torque the primary clutch to 89 foot pounds. Actually, the, the actual specs are 89 plus or minus 6 foot pounds. Um, I think I said this is a 24 millimeter before, but it is a 22, just in case I did say it wrong earlier. There you go, so it's 89. And you, this one is 52 for the secondary clutch. 17 millimeter. It's 52 there. And then you're done with this. You take your tool off. And then you need your belt tool again. And you don't always need to thread it in solid tight. You can back it off just a little bit. But the big thing is just make sure wherever you line it up that you're not in one of those holes and stuff. So you want to get on this nice flat spot here. And then just tighten that up. And then here's your new belt. This is a K&M belt. But most belts are either going to have a, an arrow rotation on them or wording and you always want to paint that in the direction it's going. Um, if you reuse an old belt, just make sure you put it on however that one came off. And then just get on the primary clutch, work around the secondary clutch. This is a brand new belt, so it's gonna be a little bit on the stiffer side too, but just kind of work it around. If you need to, you can always open it up a little bit further too. In. Stack this nut out or bolt off. Unthread this. You always want to just put the machine in the intro and reset it. So your spring or your belt's reset and ready to go. Um, then it's pretty easy. It's just a matter of putting your clutch cover back on. Again, we're just leaving this loose as we bring it up to it. You're going to try to fit that on, and you want to fit it in there first, and then line up your bolt holes. And then it's just a matter of putting eight bolts in, tighten this clamp up, put your shock back in, and you're good to go. If you did put a new belt on, be nice to the belt for the first 20 25 miles to break it in. Um, you know, vary the speed, vary the RPMs, and stuff that'll save your belt life a lot better. As far as the clutch kit, there's no real break in time on that. Other than, you know, the, once the, the, the springs heat soak and heat cycle one time, they'll be at their RPMs and where they would normally have to be.